Welcome to the virtual worship service for the First Presbyterian Church of Monrovia. I'm so glad you could join us this morning or whatever time you're watching this. If there's anything you need, um, if there's anything you're going through, uh, please know you can always reach out to the staff via our email. Uh, we're so happy to help you out in what any, whatever way we can in this time. And I hope that this service will provide a moment of peace and comfort in this insane time and that you would feel God's love and presence as you watch this. Good morning, friends. It's such an honor to be able to share the Unison reading with you this morning. And I'd like to thank Pastor Doug for inviting me. Before we get started, I just wanna tell you all how much I miss you how much I miss shaking your hands and giving hugs and trading little stories and jokes. And on behalf of the choir, I wanna tell you how much we miss singing with you and for you every week and how much we love all of you. So now, if you'll join me from the book of Hebrews in our unison reading for this morning. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe. The son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. And about the sun, he says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy.
Hi, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Anna. Uh, I am the Minister of Youth here at First Presbyterian Church of Monrovia. So I serve our 6th through 12th graders. Uh, obviously in this time of social distancing, it's been a little different doing youth group, but we still have our youth group meetings via Zoom uh, from 6.30 to 8.30 every Wednesday. Uh, if you are not participating in Zoom or if you know somebody who would be interested in having a weekly Zoom meeting with our youth group, uh, usually what we do is we play some fun games like Pictionary together uh, and then do a short teaching and prayer. Um, if ways you can be praying for our youth ministry, um, so far I have been so impressed by the incredible resilience and kindness of our 6th through 12th graders. If you want to have a prayer of celebration of these amazing 6th through 12th graders that we get to have through this church. They are so kind to one another. There have been things going on for different students and other students will step right in and hear them and call them. I'm just so impressed by our incredibly smart and talented and wonderful students. Uh, please pray for those in high school. They just finished up APs. Uh, so hopefully those tests I think went well for most of our senior, our high school students. Um, and for all of those who are graduating in our church and in our community, um, dealing with the sadness of not getting that graduation ceremony. Um, and then also be praying that when we do get back together, um, there's so many great programs our youth, or that I have dreams for our youth group that I would love to do. So hopefully um, there's an end to this whole coronavirus and we can actually do all the things I've dreamed of with our amazing students. So continue to pray for our sixth through 12th graders. They're a really amazing bunch of kids and I feel so lucky that I get it's pretty much my dream job just to hang out with them um so be thinking of us uh, as you go about your week thank you good morning church family it's wonderful to be with you in worship today on today ascension sunday as we remember uh, our risen christ ascending into the heavens to be seated at the right hand of god the father um, i'm reminded of just how mysterious our lord is i mean you think about the miracle and the mystery of the risen body, physical body of Christ being lifted into the heavens. And um, there's a lot of questions that surround that. Uh, and yet we have so much assurance through scripture. We have so much assurance through the presence of the Holy Spirit with us that this did indeed happen and that the Lord is good and he's working in the midst of these mysteries that we read about in scripture. And today, as I'm sure we're all facing various um, confusing uh, and mysterious circumstances in our quarantine situations, in our various um, situations of uh, separation from family and friends, our health and our medical concerns, uh, the anxiety that comes with this virus that we're all impacted by in various degrees, whether it's financially or, um, you know, just emotionally and mentally or physically, uh, if we've known or experienced somebody to be impacted by the virus, um, then we're certainly very conscious of this. And, and so in these very confusing times, it can be easy to wonder, where is the Lord? What is he doing? Um, what, what on earth possibly could be good that comes out of this? Um, and when we encounter these mysteries in our faith, such as the mystery of the ascension, it's so important to seek after the Lord, seek after what scripture has to say about him, and to seek after his will and his guidance in our life. So as we turn to prayer, um, as we uh, enter into our prayers of the people section of our service, I would encourage you to um, step into that mystery of whatever it is you're experiencing right now, trusting that the Lord is at work, um, and seeking seeking his guidance. So would you pray with me? God, I thank you that your scriptures assure us that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Lord, that you are good, you are merciful, you are our healer, you are our comforter, and you are provider. I pray, Lord, for every person in our church family today who is feeling hopeless, Lord, would you come and would you give them a glimpse 
of your hope and with that glimpse feed their soul carry them on through the next hour through the next day through the next week lord i pray for those in our community for whom they are just wrestling with the frustrations and the anxieties of this season. Lord, would you give them a window into what you are doing? Show them the good that is coming from this season. I pray, Lord, that you would be building them up in new ways, that you would be resting with them in their homes as they shelter in place. Lord, would you send your peace onto those who are needing a glimpse of you, needing that glimpse of, of how you are caring for them now. I thank you, God, for, for each person in our church community, Lord, who are pouring out hours of, of service to our church, to our community. Lord, would you encourage them? Would you strengthen them? and empower them to continue in your good work. We pray, Lord, for Bonrovia, for this community, Lord, um, for, I think of all of the families in these recent weeks who have been wanting to celebrate the graduations of high school and college. Lord, would you encourage our community and strengthen us as we seek to be able to celebrate each other and love each other well in the midst of so many uncertain times. And I pray, Lord, for our whole country. God, would you give our leaders wisdom? Would you give scientists and the medical workers the knowledge and understanding of this virus that they need to be able to help us to be able to get things back to normal? I pray, Lord, that you would uh, give us wisdom as a church community as we consider what it would look like for us to return back to worship uh, in our church building. And would you give us wisdom, God, we, we, we trust you, Lord, and would you just help us to know when the right time is and how to do this safely so that we can take care of our, of our church members and yet also to continue in worship of you. I thank you, Lord, and praise you for the ways that we have been able to gather and worship virtually over these weeks. Thank you, Lord, for the technology that we have. I thank you, God, for everyone's patience and their energy and pouring out into creating these services and making these services possible. God, would you continue to inspire and encourage us? Lord, I pray for this whole world. Lord, would your light come? Lord, I pray, God, that as the world has begun to just stand still, that we would somehow, that every person on this planet in their moment of having to be faced with their own um, fragility of, of life, Lord, the, the possibility of being faced with a, a virus, a deadly virus, Lord, that as we pause and consider our mortality, Lord, would we pause and look to you? Would you call your people, come, Lord, and move in a new and powerful way? We ask this knowing and believing that you are good, that you are at work, you are at work moving, breathing, ever inspiring and loving us. And we thank you and praise you for that, Lord Jesus. We ask all of this praying in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we continue in worship and giving of our tithes and our offerings, I would encourage you to uh, there, that there's a few ways that you can give. Um, you can give uh, digitally at the top of the screen. You'll be able to find a link that says give, and you'll be able to find two ways that you can give electronically. The first right there on the website, there's a, a place for you to plug in your credit card. Um, you can also download the Tithely app, which I highly recommend. It's a great way to be consistent, stay consistent in your giving. Um, and it really is a simple tool, very simple tool. Uh, if you are used to using a cell phone, um, a smartphone, then it you know download that, and it, it's very user friendly uh, for free, for future use. You can also write a check and mail it to the church, or you can drop it off along the Myrtle, seat, Myrtle Street entrance in the mail slot there. So thank you so much for giving faithfully and and praying, and um, I just. 
pray for the Lord's blessing over this offering. we thank you for your provision in our lives. We thank you for every blessing that you've blessed us with under heaven. We thank you and we want to honor you with our giving, Father. We want to sow so that we may reap in the heavenly realm. Would you bless your tithes and offerings this morning? Would you use them however you see fit? We love you and we are grateful. In your name we pray, amen.
First Presbyterian Church, Monrovia. Good morning to all of you who have joined us for worship this morning and to look at God's Word. This morning we're going to be looking at Acts chapter 1, and this Sunday is the Sunday of Ascension. And in Acts chapter 1, we will read about Jesus' ascension, his leaving earth, as well as his command and his call to the disciples uh, to be his witnesses and ambassadors. In fact, that call is extended to you and to me as well. So hear now the word of the Lord as we look at Acts chapter 1. And Luke uh, is uh, believed to be the author here. And he begins by saying, In my former book, Theophilus, and in that former book, uh, Luke is referring to the Gospel of Luke, where he also addresses Theophilus. And it's significant because that name Theophilus uh, is a, uh, from the Greek, and you, when you divide the theos and uh, the phileo, uh, is that uh, the, the name Theophilus means lover of God. And so in my former book, Lover of God, Theophilus, uh, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. And after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles uh, that he had chosen, he spoke to them about his suffering. He showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and he spoke about the kingdom of God to them. Well, on one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. And he said, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, Jesus said. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. And they were looking intently up into the sky as he was going. When suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside him, Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way that you have seen him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. This is the word of the Lord, and together we say, thanks be to God. Well, as we look at this text, I want you to know that we first of all want to note that in Jesus' ascension, uh, we underscore the importance of the glorification of Jesus. We also recognize that not only was Jesus glorified, but also this was a point of coronation uh, for Jesus in his uh, ministry, uh, in the, the lordship uh, of Jesus as we refer to him and know him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Also, as we look at this particular passage, uh, we are reminded of the gift that Jesus is giving to his disciples, the ongoing gift, comforter, counselor, the ongoing presence of the Holy Spirit that will continue to be uh, and come alongside of the church to empower and as well as to equip. And then also there is in this passage and the importance of the ascension the promise of the continuing intercessory ministry of Jesus on our behalf. And as we begin this, I first of all want to uh, underscore that uh, this also, in this glorification, there is a perhaps a, a looking back to just exactly where did Jesus come from. We're reminded uh, of the prophecies of the coming of the Son of Man, the coming of the Son of God into God's world 
and we're reminded of uh, the words in Isaiah chapter 9 is that uh, the, the one who was coming uh, was wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, and prince of peace. And of his kingdom, there would be no end. And so as Jesus is ascending to heaven, we are reminded of the prophecies that foretold the coming of Jesus Christ and of his eternal reign. Uh, and then uh, as Jesus is ascending to heaven, we're kind of given a, a picture from Daniel chapter 7, it, uh, where in uh, Daniel, Daniel chapter 7, verse 13, uh, we read that in my vision at night, I looked and there before me was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient of days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshiped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. Fascinating how Daniel, Daniel uh, as well as the prophets, as they foretold and foresaw uh, the coming of the Son of Man, of the Christ, of the Messiah. Uh, and they talked about the, the uh, eternal kingdom uh, that he oversaw. Uh, and in Daniel, about his rising and being given authority and glory and sovereign power over all of the nations from uh, every language, uh, and that his dominion is an everlasting dominion. And interestingly, we hear in the Apostle Paul as well in Philippians chapter 2, is that one day every knee shall bow and tongue will confess uh, to the glory of God that Jesus Christ uh, is Lord. And so this declaration uh, on this Ascension Sunday, on the Ascension after this 40 days of ministry, Jesus is being received and is being glorified uh, in his, in a sense, his return uh, in the shroud of this, what is referred to as the Shekinah uh, glory, the glory of God. And he was going to be received and returned uh, from where he came uh, at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. So the ascension was a glorious thing. And that is why after he ascended, the disciples went back into Jerusalem. And when they went back into Jerusalem, uh, instead of being sorrowful and sad, they knew this was a time of glorification. Uh, Jesus had explained to them the importance of his departure uh, and that his return meant a greater engagement uh, for his disciples uh, and that there was a new time and a new day that would begin uh, and that Jesus' ministry was a con uh, would be continued not only through them, but on into uh, eternity. And so the ascension is not the end of Jesus' ministry. As a matter of fact, what uh, is fascinating is that as we go through the death and crucifixion of Jesus, and we sort of come to somewhat of a conclusion, uh, and yet he defeats the, cruci the crucifixion, meaning uh, the, the conquering of sin and death. Well, we know that Jesus was victorious then because of his resurrection. Uh, and so there is the crucifixion, uh, and which is sort of a, a, a climax. Uh, and then we come to the resurrection, which is a conquering victory over sin and death. And now we come to this ascension. And it is sort of one of these stories that you might say, well, you know, gee, that was terrific. Wow, what a powerful, you know, story that is. Well, wait a minute. It's not over yet. And now there's the resurrection. And then the resurrection occurs. And so Jesus is here for 40 days and teaching his disciples. But, and we might say, okay, well, the resurrection, and that's the end of this. No, it isn't. That, you know, wait, there's still more to come. And now we have the ascension. And the ascension takes place. And Jesus now in his time of glorification and being received back into the presence of God with great adulation, worship and praise. And worthy is the lamb who was slain and now worthy of worship, praise, and honor, and glory. Uh, and so we might say, well, okay, it, it's over. Jesus' mission is accomplished. Ah, no, no, wait, there's one more thing coming. 
And Jesus gives that to his disciples on this occasion in the first chapter of Acts. And he says, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. And so it's like, okay, well, you thought that was terrific. You thought the ascension was terrific. You thought the resurrection was terrific. Well, they were, but there's more to come that is even more wonderful, splendid, miraculous, the journey of Jesus continuing ongoing ministry through human beings, limited individuals, the fallen, the broken, uh, the, the limited individuals like these disciples, and then like you and me. Christ has chosen to use us, to engage us, to call us to be his body, his church in the world. And through our love, through the exercise of the gifts that he gives to us, through the continuing witness of the Holy Spirit in us and through us, he changes our lives, he makes us alive in order that we might become instruments of his uh, communication, ambassadors to tell and communicate and show and demonstrate that we believe in the good news and salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ in calling people of every tribe, tongue, and nation to gather and to bow and confess him as Savior and Lord. And so this glorification has taken place, and then there is this coronation. You see, in the ascension, Jesus went up to his uh, coronation. He is declared King of kings and Lord of lords. He ascended to the throne at the right hand of God. In the Apostles' Creed, we confess and acknowledge, and we start off that creed by saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. Well, God, the Father Almighty, is used again about halfway through the creed. After we confess and acknowledge that we believe in the resurrection, he was resurrected, uh, he was crucified, dead and buried under Pontius Pilate, he was resurrected on the third day, he descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again. And then he ascended into heaven to be seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And so this is the coronation of Jesus Christ. He is declared and recognized and given, as we see at the end of Matthew, uh, the words of Jesus to his disciples. Uh, as he commissions them and gives them that great commission. He says, all power and authority have been given to me in heaven and over earth. And he said, and my command to you is to go and make disciples and teaching every nation all that I have instructed you and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so the Lamb who was slain has become now the Lion of Judah, who now reigns over the earth, King of kings and Lord of lords. And so of his rule and his reign, there is no end. And so as we look forward to Pentecost and the birth of the church, we are reminded of Jesus' words. You remember when Peter, in uh, during Jesus' ministry, uh, Jesus says to the disciples, you know, who do men say that I am? And, you know, and, and at that point, Jesus, uh, Peter confesses. He said, well, you are, the, uh, uh, you are the son of the living God. And Jesus then says, well, upon this rock, I will build my church. And he said, the gates of hell will not prevail against me. And so as Jesus is ascended he, and he receives his coronation uh, and is given authority over all of heaven and earth, it is also a declaration is that the ministry that the disciples will undertake, the ministry that we continue as the body of Christ in the world today will never be defeated. There is Jesus victory and triumph. Now, we are not a triumphalist organization. We know the victory is with Jesus, but in our triumphalism, you know, we do with humility. We go about and we are involved and engaged, uh, in a sense, in the work of seeking to eradicate and eliminate uh, the darkness. So in other words, everything that we do on here on earth is extremely important. You know, Jesus didn't 
rise to, to the heavens and become and, and declared King of Kings and Lord of Lords to mean that life here on earth is no longer uh, meaningless uh, or that our involvement here on earth uh, is just a work in vain. Uh, but indeed, what Jesus is seeking to do and where he is Lord and authority is over the heavens and the earth. He is seeking to bring the kingdom of heaven here to earth. And one day, as we look again at the end, the future uh, result of the coronation and the declaration and ascension of Jesus to the right hand of the Father, is that the kingdom will be established here on earth. There will be a new Jerusalem, a new heaven and a new earth. And so the earth and heaven uh, will be, in a sense, uh, locked uh, together. Uh, and joined together in a perfection and a beauty that only God can bring about and accomplish. And so then that brings us to our third point is the gift of the counselor, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so one of the interesting things that uh, I feel like is being st said and taught here by Jesus is he says to the disciples, he says, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift uh, that... Uh, I promised you that God promised and that you heard me speak about. Uh, in other words, he's saying to me, he's saying to the disciples, he said, don't go out and try to continue this journey on your own, in, in, in your own strength. He said, but remember uh, that you have limitations. You need God's power and strength to be able to speak and use you uh, and minister through you. And so for you and for me, the temptation our human arrogance, our ego, that is edging God out. Uh, we, we tend to want to do things perhaps in our own way and establish and set up our own agendas. I'm reminded by a, a, a statement made by, uh, in a movie uh, that uh, indicates that a man has got to know his limitations. Uh, and so I've borrowed that line from a Clint Eastwood movie is that uh, as uh, he was a police detective and he was confronting and uh, seeking to bring bad guys uh, into line. And so he says to this one bad guy, he says, a man's got to know his limitations. Well, Jesus is saying to the disciples and to you and me as well, as we've got to know our limitations. You know, we need the coming power of the Holy Spirit. And so we need to wait, wait upon the Lord. And when we wait upon the Lord, he will renew our strength and use, utilize us uh, as the instruments and uh, in his ministry of reconciliation to the world. We need to become new creations through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so what do the disciples do? They want to begin to talk uh, to Jesus about uh, the arrival of and the restoration of the kingdom of Israel. They're still looking towards human power. They're still looking for human and earth domination. Uh, they're looking for Israel to be lifted up and called and established as the greatest. Well, Jesus is saying to them, no, 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 no. You, you leave that to God the Father. It's not for uh, you to know the times or the seasons, uh, but we've got other work to do. And that work is for you to be my disciples and my witnesses. Uh, those who are going to go to the ends of the earth, to the next door locations, to our neighbors, to our friends, our circle of people that we are in relationship with. It also means that we go to neighboring countries and to neighbor, neighboring areas geographically, and we go to Samaria, to places where we really don't feel comfortable going, places that we would rather not go to. Uh, but we are to go there as well. We are to go everywhere to proclaim and declare and show and demonstrate the love of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth, Jesus said. And after this, he was taken up before their very eyes. Well, the gift of the Holy Spirit comes to us so that we might be the body of Christ in the world. You see, Jesus now in his place of coronation, his place of glorification, is that uh, he is invisible. We become the visible. We become the incarnation of Jesus Christ in the world today. And 
That does not mean that we are deified in any way, shape, or form. But it does mean that in our limitations and even in spite of our sin, the one who became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God is seeking through us to build his church, to establish and represent his kingdom before the world, and to call the world to embrace the justice and love and values of God uh, and his purposes. And then finally, there is the ministry, the ongoing intercession of Jesus, the ministry of the high priest. You see, Jesus is our high priest. He is prophet, priest, and king. As prophet, he came to speak the word of God, the truth of God uh, to us and to call us to repentance. Uh, just as John the Baptist, the, uh, the greatest of all prophets, Jesus said, uh, who was speaking a word of repentance, uh, calling people to uh, set aside uh, their self-centeredness, their self-absorption. And so Jesus now as the high priest uh, is coming again to be a, a, a bridge, an intercessor, a mediator for us. And so as Jesus, as our high priest, he offers his own sacrifice. He is the lamb. The high priest would bring uh, the, 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 the unblemished lamb. Uh, but Jesus, as our high priest, he is the lamb and he presents himself as the perfect sacrifice and dies on the cross uh, and sheds his own blood. And so he is not only our priest and he intercedes for us uh, and by faith in him, Jesus pleads our case. And so by his sacrifice, his dying in our stead and in he as our substitute, uh, he brings to us our justification. So in Christ, we are declared not guilty because we are seen in his righteousness. And so as we recall in 1 John, we re remember and hear the statement is that when we confess our sin, he is faithful and just and he forgives us our sin and he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. This is the work of the priest the priesthood, the ministry of the great high priest, who is Jesus Christ, the righteous. And in uh, the book of Hebrews, we read a lot about Jesus being uh, the high priest. And in Hebrews chapter 7, we have Jesus lives forever, and because he lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him, because Jesus always lives to intercede for them. Also a part of this intercession is the ministry of prayer. And so Jesus is praying for us. So when we ask that question, well, gee whiz, I wonder what Jesus is up to now. Well, he's not only ruling and having authority over the heavens and the earth. And he's not only sending and writing an executive order, you know, to send the Holy Spirit uh, into our world and to come alongside and partner with us uh, in ministry. But he is also praying for us. It's interesting in Romans chapter 8, we find that even before we know how to pray, even before we know what to pray for, the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, by the grace of God, is already praying uh, for what we need and praying the prayers that we even don't know that we should be praying. And so Christ is always going before us. And so whenever you hear me say about Christ is above us, he is beneath us, and he is out in front of us, he is behind us, he is on the right and on the left, that is Christ's intercession for you and for me as our great high priest. Also in Hebrews chapter 4, as Jesus, the great high priest, he is one who is able to understand our human condition, understand our human experiences. And so it says we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven. He is Jesus, the Son of God, it says. And he says, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess.
for we do not have a high priest who is unable, but who is able to empathize, sympathize with our weaknesses. For he was tempted in every way, just as we are, and yet he did not sin. So as a result of Jesus as our great high priest, then we can approach God's throne with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace in our time of need. And we know as a human race that even especially through this time of pandemic uh, and in the years, the decades, the centuries previous, and even the ones that we face, that there are difficulties, there are challenges, there are darknesses that we must face and that we must battle against. We cannot do it in and of our own strength, but we wait and we travel with and follow the leading of and in the power of the Holy Spirit to accomplish the will of God. I love the words of uh, N.T. Wright in uh, one of his quotes as he speaks of us uh, and he speaks of the importance of the ascension and he indicates that we are called not to be a fearful or muddled group but he, Jesus Christ has come alongside of us and he oversees us as our King and Kingdom, Lord of Lords. And he is desirous in and through us to bear a clear and uncompromised witness to Jesus Christ, risen, ascended, glorified, and ruling over the heavens and the earth. And we are declared, to declare this life and lordship of Jesus over which he rules. And we are to do this with acts of love, kindness, and courage. As we think of the history of the church, the method of the kingdom is supposed to match the message of the kingdom, says N.T. Wright. The kingdom will come as the church, energized by the Holy Spirit, goes out into the world vulnerable, suffering, praising, praying, perhaps misunderstood, misjudged, but yet celebrating the fact that Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And so we go forth with Christ above us, beneath us, in front and behind, on the right side and the left. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
As we conclude our time of worship together this morning, I bring us to 1 Timothy chapter 6. And here in this chapter, the Apostle Paul is giving a charge to Timothy, a follower of the Lord Jesus. And this charge, of course, is certainly appropriate and relevant for you and for me as well. Here the Apostle Paul writes to Timothy and to you and to me. He says, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith, he says. Take hold of the eternal life to which we were called when we made our good confession in the presence of many witnesses. And remember, keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and might forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>